I've always been really interested in computers. So when I heard about Deep Blue, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like all of a sudden you have this computer that's able to defeat the world champion at chess. And chess is a pretty complicated game. But then I did a little more research and I realized that Deep Blue uses a lot of game specific heuristics and evaluation functions that you can only use for chess. So we can't take these learnings and transfer it over to help computers cure cancer or make better materials. But then I heard about AlphaZero and this is what got me really excited because all of a sudden you had this algorithm tech that could generalize to many different games. And some of the learnings from this algorithm can actually be applied to solve real world problems. So that's why I use the AlphaZero algorithm to make a bot that plays a game called Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe. Okay, so this is what the Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe board looks like. So these are all mini tic-tac-toe boards on a larger tic-tac-toe board. So the objective of the game is to get a three in a row on the larger tic-tac-toe board. Now, the way you do that is by winning these smaller boards. The first player starts off by playing on any board. Then the next player has to play on the board corresponding to where the first player placed their piece. So for example, let's say uh, X starts and X plays in the middle first. That means that O can only play on the middle board. So let's say O plays here. Now X has to play on this board. This keeps going until someone wins an entire board. So let's say this board, there's already some stuff here and X places here. So now they won the entire board. So let's say the game has been going on for a while and X just placed over here because it wanted to block O from getting a three in a row. So now O has to play on this board. Now O is most likely going to play over here because it wants to block uh, X from getting a three in a row on this board. But now X is sent to a board that's already been won. So when something like this happens, X can go wherever it wants on the entire board. So maybe X might go over here and win this board. Now this sort of game just keeps on going until someone gets a three in a row on the larger board. Ultimate tic-tac-toe is much more complex than regular tic-tac-toe. Okay, so to make a bot that plays ultimate tic-tac-toe, there are two parts to it. The first is a neural network, and this neural network is then trained using games of self-play. So the network will play against itself, collect experience, and then the neural network will be trained on this experience so it gets better. So the neural network has two outputs, a policy vector and a value. So the policy vector is a vector with the probabilities of taking a certain action. And the value is the network's guess at whether from the current state, the current player will win or lose. And it's a number between one and negative one. So alpha zero's neural network has 20 residual blocks followed by the policy and value outputs. So I didn't need that complex of a neural network. Like ultimate tic-tac-toe isn't nearly as complex as Go. So I just asked a friend about what the architecture of the neural network should be. And he said, have three convolutional layers, two dense layers, and then the value up and policy out outputs and see what happens. So that's what I did and it turned out pretty well. So for every game of self-play, the model decides which move to take by performing a Monte Carlo tree search. Now the way this works is that it starts off at a root node, which is the current board state. And then it looks at all the possible actions it can take. Then it calculates the upper confidence bound for all of these actions. So in order to calculate the upper confidence bound, we maintain some variables for every node in the game tree, variables like Q, P, and N. So the upper confidence bound is equal to the Q value of the state action pair. This is the average reward gained after taking an action from state S. And then we add on the product of these three terms. So CPUCT is just a hyperparameter we can tune. The higher this is, the more the model will explore. P S of A is the initial probabilities of taking action A from state X predicted by the neural network. And then this is a term which basically looks at how neglected a certain action was. So it sums up the amount of times that the state has been visited and then divides it by the amount of times the state action pair has been visited. So the less the state action pair has been visited compared to the state, the higher this number ends up being, 
So the higher the probability that the model will choose to take this action. Then the model takes the action with the highest upper confidence bound. So let's say that happens to be this action. Then it'll take this action and end up at a new state and just repeat the process, each time flipping its perspective. So then let's say we end up at a leaf node. So we've never been to this state and we have no information about it, so we can't calculate its upper confidence bound. So instead what we do is we feed the state into the neural network and the neural network will give us probabilities for taking each action and it'll give us a value for this leaf node. Then that value gets propagated back up the tree to all of its parent nodes. And the probabilities are stored so that we can use it later if we end up at the state again to calculate the upper confidence bound. So for every state action pair, we maintain some variables here. So we add V, which is the value that was predicted for this node by the neural network, to W, which is the total amount of reward gained after taking a certain state action pair. If instead we end up at a terminal state, meaning the game is ended, then we propagate back up the actual value of that state. NS and NSA are incremented by one. So this is basically the amount of times that a certain state has been visited and a certain state action pair. And the Q value of a state action pair is recalculated by dividing the total amount of reward gained after taking the action by the number of times that the state action pair was taken. So after doing an iteration of Monte Carlo tree search, the model creates a policy based on how often it took a certain action. So the NSA value of those actions. And then it samples from this stochastic policy to actually choose which action it's gonna take in the actual game it's playing. So after taking this action, it stores the state, the stochastic policy, and another value, which is filled in at the end of the game, basically indicates whether the game was a win, lose, or a tie. So one for a win, zero for a tie, and negative one for a loss. It stores these tuples in a memory. Then once the game has finished, and that last value is filled in with the real result of the game, these tuples are given to the neural network, and the policy head of the neural network is trained towards the policy, so the stochastic policy that we made through the Monte Carlo tree search, and the value head is trained towards the actual value. And that's it. So I just let it train for a while and eventually got really good at ultimate tic-tac-toe. Like the best I can do against it is tie. Here I'm playing against a trained model. Right now it's just a command line version, but I'm gonna get a nice UI up soon. So right now we have to play on board number seven, which is this one. These are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's play on the middle left square. Then the algorithm chose to play on the top right square. And we can also look at the probabilities here. Uh, again, these are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. So it wasn't too confident of its uh, decision here. In fact, it was also considering placing it in this square or in the very last square. So here's the code I actually used to train the model. I had to play around a lot with these hyperparameters. So the model was trained for 100 episodes of self-play. Every episode, the model played two games of self-play. And for every game of self-play, in order to decide which move to take, it made 600 Monte Carlo tree search simulations. I found that the deeper this tree search, the better the policy vector was, but it also took longer to train. So I think 600 was a decent amount. I also played around with CPUCT. I found that four tends to be pretty good because it allows the model to explore a sufficient amount of states. And then here we have the neural network itself. So it has three convolutional layers followed by two dense layers and then the policy and value outputs. So the loss function for the value output is mean squared error. And for the policy output, it's categorical cross entropy. And then as the optimizer, I chose to use Atom. So the alpha zero algorithm is pretty incredible, but Currently, it can only play deterministic, fully observable games. So things like chess, Go, ultimate tic-tac-toe. But the things DeepMinds learned from this algorithm are being used to play some really complex games. Things like StarCraft with DeepMinds alpha star algorithm, or even solve the protein folding problem with alpha fold. This algorithm is actually making an impact in the real world. And that's why I'm so excited by it. You can find the GitHub for this project down in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. My email and LinkedIn are also there. All right, see you guys.